In the full version of Geometry Dash, players have access to the built-in level editor which gives creators the ability to create any configuration of objects they can imagine. The editor has been a staple for GD ever since the game was initially released over 11 years ago, and some genuinely really impressive works of art have come out of it. I'm not going to be talking about the game recreations or the straight up movies, rather the oldest form of level that can be made. A classic auto-scrolling GD level. When GD first made it onto app stores, the first creators were given a very small amount of objects compared to what we have access to today. Among these few objects were the first Jump Pad and Jump Orb, or Jump Ring if that's the way you swing. These two game mechanics were vital to making more interesting gameplay that wasn't just jumping from pillar to pillar. In fact, they were so vital that they each had their own level dedicated to properly introducing their own mechanic. The pads were first introduced in the second official level, Back on Track, and the orbs first appeared in the third official level, Polargeist. God, could you imagine if every new feature added nowadays had their own level made for that specific feature? How many levels would we have in that case? Someone out there do the math, I'll be checking the comments. Anyways, the pads and orbs had some different variations that integrated into later updates, such as the pink, blue, and red ones. But all pads were similar in that you did not need a player input to activate its function, whereas all orbs require a player input. The difference in their interaction is most likely the main reason that both of them exist rather than just having one. It allows for more variety in the gameplay, even if us players only had one of each type of object to start out with. So what's my problem then? Us players were given two different features that help create unique gameplay to better express the energy of the song. We ended up getting more orbs and pads in several future updates, and newer features still work incredibly well with these 11 year old mechanics because they work so well on their own originally. Well, my problem isn't about the objects themselves, but rather the really clunky and obtuse ways that more and more creators have been misusing them for years now. OPINION DISCLAIMER! All the gameplay footage in the backgrounds has featured what I consider to be both proper use of pads and orbs. Now, I will show you what I think is one of the worst things a creator can do for the gameplay in their levels. That, right there, that's a floating pad. Specifically, a pair of floating pads. I hate these. <laughs> Every time I see them used in an otherwise really well-executed level, my nose wrinkles and my eyebrows furrow. Floating pads are a very poor way of syncing gameplay, and I genuinely don't understand why I keep seeing them pop up in levels, whereas there are far better looking and more satisfying solutions already available. To give you guys a better idea of some actual examples, I've compiled two lists, each having three levels. One of these lists contains levels with floating pads, and another where there are no floating pads. And all levels shown are made by objectively popular creators. Here are both lists on screen. Floating pad enjoyers on the left, and floating pad avoiders on the right. Now the levels in each of these lists also have another thing in common that I didn't specify earlier. All the creators in one of these lists have garnered a reputation for their gameplay, often being referred to as not so intuitive or more awkward to play than other levels. The other list, however, contains creators who have worked their way to the top, proving time and time again that they each understand what makes a level enjoyable, sometimes sight-readable, although not required, and downright fun to play. And it should be no surprise which title goes to which list. If you don't believe me, take a look through the comment sections of each of these levels, or how other people describe how much fun the level was or wasn't to play. Or at the very least, you're likely to see more of one type of comment than the other in most cases. And I do want to clarify, no hate goes out to any of these creators, and I'm aware that both lists have their set of exceptions. But I'm speaking in a more general sense with these creators. Like most things, however, gameplay or layout creation is an art form. And like with all art forms, there are people who are more naturally gifted and understand the language of the medium. Wait, that word. Language. Now, what do I mean exactly about language in this context? Well, languages are ways of understanding something through convention and structure. It's something that can be learned and improved over time with practice if one wishes to. We see the convention and structure of pads being used while attached to platforms or the level's ground, whereas orbs are introduced as floating objects. So if these are the conventional ways of using these mechanics, at least in the eyes of early level creators, then what does this bit of gameplay communicate? 
To me, it's essentially a case of being lost in translation, and a failure to understand the intended purpose of the original mechanics that comes across as lazy rather than an intentional decision. However, like with most things, there are exceptions to this. See, my main issue with these pads is that they are floating midair without any proper support, nothing holding them up. If we take a look at the debut level of the jump pad back on track and scan through the entire level, we can see that they all have one thing in common. They are supported by structure, by convention. None of them are floating aimlessly in the air trying to disguise themselves as an orb, which would be really weird considering the player hasn't been introduced to them yet. They are instead resting on the level's ground, raised up by pillars, or supported by a suspended platform. So then when going to custom levels and seeing floating pads, my brain has to think about if that's somewhere where I need to click in order to progress or not, especially if it's two of them creating a more rounded object like an orb. What makes it even worse is when you need to do a jump in order to hit the floating pads and then they just boost you up anyways. So what was the point of the player height jump if you're just gonna immediately do something else? It's not intuitive at all. Even the player trail arc looks wrong here. Just, just get it away from me. No, mm -mm. This is a really random thought, but I swear it relates. You know when you're in your two-week Minecraft phase and you get really motivated to work on a specific build and end up watching some top 10 building tips on YouTube? Usually, one of those tips that is provided is make sure your builds still abide by physics and not have large sections floating in the air. Do your best to make them feel supported or grounded. Do the same thing here. You never see anyone do this with chain objects, why would you do them with pads? If you're a creator and you find yourself doing this, I'd like to offer quick and easy solutions to this misuse of gameplay that get the same result at the end and feel less awkward. Method one, two gravity portals. If you have a case where you're supposed to jump into a pad, try replacing them with two gravity portals instead. The jump into the first portal and falling up after creates an S-bend in the player's arc, which is a very satisfying motion for the player to take. It's a lot smoother, and you can adjust the positioning and rotation of either portal so you can have the sync still match up perfectly. Method 2. Slopes. Slopes are famous for making gameplay feel like it has more flow to it. They provide this feeling of the player feeling lighter on their feet while still maintaining control. No matter what the player size is or level speed, all three angles of slopes can get you where you'll need to be and done in an amusing and fun fashion. Method 3. Minor support. If you're really dead set on keeping the floating pads, at least support one of them with something from underneath. Regardless of the level style, please remove the second jump pad and replace it with something, anything, Pads need to be connected to something that provides a sense of stability, so try putting a default object under or something that matches the level style underneath one pad. Alternatively, you can do what Surplunge did in a few of his levels and put a glow object of the same color underneath. Hey, look, you can even stack these vertical now too. As an added note, if you plan on putting some pads in with your gameplay portals, please make sure you only add them to the game modes where the player doesn't have a mid-air input like the UFO, ship, or swing. There's nothing worse than dying to a game mode transition that the pads are straight up hidden and you click as a precautionary action which ends up killing you more often than not. What I really want to drive home is that what you do in your gameplay matters and everything that you do or don't do has an effect on how a player views a level. You are your own creator and you choose how you want your gameplay to play and feel. However, knowing that different ways of getting from point A to point B exist and acknowledging that they feel different at their core are very important when it comes to level design. Make sure there is a good reason for you to add what you add when it comes to the layout, and be open to understanding that different executions have different feelings to them. To me, two jump pads communicates that the builder didn't know how to get from point A to point B, and so they put a pad there just to bridge that gap, only to put a second one underneath it to try to make it look like some thought was put into it, when in reality, it looks tacked on last minute, it feels tacked on last minute, and it doesn't flow well. I hope you guys were able to get something out of this video, whether it was something from my perspective or just a little tip in creating little better sections of gameplay. Thank you guys so much for watching through to the end. I really appreciate it. Good luck with building your layouts, and stay awesome out there.
Look, all I'm saying is that even in that one part in Geometrical Dominator, one single pad had a whole pillar made for it. Like, come on!